Alrighty. Man, God is awesome. God is awesome. You know, I said it this morning, I'll repeat it again. Yesterday is one year from the time that second crisscross will go across America. Carbondale, Illinois. Little Egypt. God is Xing out the United States. We've been preaching this since the Bible code, code told us and before the plain text and watching what was going on around the world in the plain text, Jeremiah 50 and 51. God hates America. We've been hollering out. God gave me the privilege to leave this country and visit several other countries. And I, I knew it, it didn't surprise me a bit, but just to hear everybody how bad they hate us. And America don't think anything. they're like any other narcissistic idiot retard. Oh, they just think everybody loves them as much as they love themselves. We're so great and everybody just loves us, man. They think we're awesome. The, the world hates you, America. And that's why it's important for you and I, the Christian, to say, you know what? I'm not American. I'm a citizen of heaven. I'm an ambassador of Jesus Christ. And, you know, heaven, uh, the New Jerusalem, that's where I'm from. And that's where I'm going very soon. So, one year from yesterday, that is April 8th, 2024, will be the crisscross of God's eclipse, finishing off the United States of America. Now, he will have, I believe, already done a super-duper doozy job of the United States before then. Okay? I think that X will be part of the tribulation, be part of his judgment from Nibiru, is what I think. Okay? The pole flip. The sixth seal kind of what I'm thinking, okay? Because it'll finish America off and much of the other coastlines around the world. It's going to do some shaking and baking, just like we were told in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah is awesome, guys. You might want to familiarize yourself with the book of Isaiah and Jeremiah, Lamentations, Hosea, okay? That's USA, USA, okay? God is sick of the USA. He's going to bring it down. Then, three months from today is the 50-day count to the wheat harvest. Today is April 9, and that'll be July 9. We begin our count on Resurrection Sunday. Today's not Resurrection Sunday for Jesus. Today's Resurrection Sunday for the devil, for Antichrist. Okay, everything that's happening today in the ritual, if there is a one bunny rabbit or one egg involved, I want, guys, please, they have shadow banned me like you would not believe. Please go to my Facebook. Please go to my Facebook. It has been a long time since I had a bunch of likes. I need you to like this post that I just posted. I've got four, four likes right now. That's it. Because Facebook will not let people see my post. Here's what it says. Eggs and bunnies with the tag, he is risen, is a ritual of raising satanic Barack Obama, the Antichrist from the dead. That's what that is. Everybody is empowering that ritual. Do you guys not understand everything is a ritual? Everything is a ritual, man, if you're not in Jesus Christ. And if you are in Jesus Christ, we look back at Leviticus 23 and see what they practiced. And the raising of those two loaves and, you know, whatnot on Pentecost. That's where we are. And it's going to come to pass and it will be fulfilled by Jesus himself. This whole thing that everybody's doing today, saying, calling it Easter and got the bunny rabbits and, uh, you know, all the fertility stuff, it is, it is for Satan. It is for Barack Obama. You can candy coat it. You can say, I'm free in Jesus Christ to do whatever we want. And Jesus is cool with my satanic worship. And it's, you're on the wrong day. The day he dies is not until May 18. The day he raises from the dead on his calendar, what God knows, what's going on in heaven, is May 21. The 21st of May is Resurrection Sunday. This is when you are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Today, all are celebrating the resurrection of Obama at the mid-trib when he suffers a head wound. He, his eye goes missing, his right side, his arm is shriveled up, and he raises from the dead. That's what today is all about. And your involvement in today, Resurrection Sunday, is for Obama, the Antichrist, and his resurrection, not Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is truth, and he expects all of us to walk in truth, especially when you have 
much been given. And to whom much has been given, the internet, you have access to all kinds of learning and study. And the command to you was study to show yourself approved to God, a worker, a workman who will not be ashamed at the judgment seat of Christ because you will have rightly divided the word of truth. You will have understood through the entire Old Testament in Genesis how much God hates the devil. He's his enemy. How much God hates idols. How much God hates, in Genesis 3.15, you don't have to go far to realize how much God hates the Antichrist. He hates Barack Obama. And he calls him his enemy, the seed of the serpent. And Jesus is the seed of the woman. Mentioned in Genesis 3.15, God hates Barack Obama, and you guys celebrated him today. And God has noted it. God ain't stupid. Is God stupid? Is, is God just a nice guy and says, oh, that's cool. That's okay. When in the Bible, all the way through the Bible, he said it's not okay. He will stamp them to powder. He will grind them to powder. He will burn and cut down all your groves and all your idols, all, all the way through the Bible. Guys, if, if you would have learned God, you would have hated the celebration of Easter today. Hated it with a passion. But you didn't. You love those bunnies and you love those eggs and you love Easter and you just love meeting with all the family because we've always done it. It's tradition. You know, just like the Pharisees. When Jesus poked them in the eye about their traditions and told them they're wasted, worthless, and vanity, man. Amen. I appreciate that. Vando Vando said, pray for me every night. I appreciate the prayers, guys. Uh, make sure you give to Sean. The link's put up here every night. Uh, I want us to read over the... I had it up here a second ago. But will you please go over to my Facebook and like that new post that I did? Okay? I used to get 70, 70 likes, 70 responses. And we get, you know, 20 now. And that takes about a week. It takes a week to get responses. Will you please go to my Facebook and click love on that new post that I made with the skulls on it, the purple skulls. It says, eggs and bunnies with the tagline, he is risen, is a ritual for raising satanic Barack Obama from the dead when Satan enters him at the mid-trib. That's what this is all about. It's what it has always been about. Okay, don't empower the rituals of, of the devil. You just obey Jesus. Humbly and from your heart, obey Jesus. Amen? All right, man. I had, I wanted us to read that new um, uh, code uh, that we read last night. Sean had, had put it up and he didn't click enter to update the code. And so I missed some lines and I want to do that. I want to make sure that we get those lines. Okay, where is Sean Mitchell? There we go. There we go. Okay, so we're going to cover that old code or the, the brand new code, actually, of Jeff Fiesel. I want to read a couple of the lines to you, and then we'll continue on in other codes. The news is the same. The big news in about the Iraq dinar is Iran had purchased tons of it. Tons of it. I mean, uh, 5 million a week kind of a thing. Uh, 500 million a week kind of thing. Half a billion. They're purchasing it, purchasing it, purchasing it. Well, they stopped the street sales of it. And they actually lost money on their purchases. So Iran hasn't purchased the Iraq dinar in over a week. Okay, so they put a stop to that. And so that's just one more step in the whole process. Remember what we've said. The Middle East and the East go up in value and price and everything while the West goes down, NATO and all of us. Okay, these are the two factions. Remember, Jesus said a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. Well, that's why it's vital that you and I be in unity in Jesus Christ, and we begin at salvation. How are you saved, bro? You call yourself a Christian. How are you saved? Well, I was saved because I placed my faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and I'm trusting him alone for my salvation. Wow. That helps unify us because that's the true belief in salvation. And so if anybody gives any other answer other than that and includes a work, a baptism, they are just 
as wicked as they will be at the great white throne judgment when they say, Lord, Lord, didn't we do a bunch of crap for you? Okay? We don't unify with works salvation folk. They are of the devil. Of the devil. Do you understand? It's not just, oh, they're a brother in error. They're not a brother. They're of the seed of Satan. They have never been saved. They're not born again. We don't unify with lost folk. Hello? Do you got that yet? Have you read Paul enough to understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? We don't unify with devils. And say, so, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. Would you like to be a Christian too? Be a Christian. Oh, be a Christian. Okay, so stop. What does that mean? Most people aren't Christ-like in their Christianity. They've not been born again. You must. Jesus said, you must be born again. And don't you marvel at me that I said you must be born again because you must be born again. And there's only way to be born again. Coming to the creator who recreates. You were born because of him and his wonderful creation and reproduction and the beauty of that, the multiplication. He said, go multiply the earth. And boy, Adam obeyed and they did that. And now here you are. The creator did that. And the recreator, same person, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he wants to recreate you and he, you must be recreated. You must be born again. And that's only by placing your faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Nothing else, period. Shh, shh, no, 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 shh, that's all. That's all, believe. Shh, 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 no, just believe. Childlike faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Faith, 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 and all these idiots. Guys, there are so many online who laugh at for salvation by faith alone, grace alone. They call it greasy grace and sloppy grace and sloppy agape. And they all these names for God's wonderful gift. You guys understand that we are all beggars. We are all filthy. We are all together become filthy. And Jesus Christ still gave us gifts while we were sinners. He died for us. He's not waiting for you to clean up. He comes and gives filthy sinners a gift of cleaning up, of salvation, of righteousness, of heaven, of justification, sanctification, and glorification, all in one gift, when you believe. Do you believe? No. Do you believe? That's it. All right. This code here, we looked at Jeff Fiesel. And... Uh, when it says Jeff rose up, that word is cam, and that means the enemy. Enemy. So when Jeff rose up, Jeff the enemy. Okay, when I say that, when you hear me say that, that's what that's talking about. All right, let's check it out. Jeff Fiesel, this is from one day ago, the code. And it's important that we read this because this guy's a snake. Guys, you must understand the importance of this. Why is he picking on this guy? Because this guy is a layover like God always has. Remember, Jesus had his Judas just before a dispensational change. Okay? Moses had his Judas just before a dispensational change. Korah? Korah was his Judas. Judas was Jesus' Judas. And this guy right here, Jeff Fiesel is Sean Mitchell's Judas. Moses, Elijah, he's his Judas. And like to put him out of commission while he was at his lowest. Okay, used by the devil. He's coming to steal, kill, and destroy. And he'll wait till you're at your lowest point in health, in sorrow, in agony, and then he'll just kick you in the teeth while you're down. Come on in, Judas. And he did. The devil opened the door and this guy come barreling through. So we got to understand that. This, and guys, his points in time. The, like, for instance, when he first messaged Sean, the time stamp on that is numerically a God move. Okay? It's incredible. Mind-blowing stuff. Remember, there's nothing that's just eh, vain and empty to God. All things are recorded. All things are purposeful. And all things are going to be remembered. 
Jeff Fiesel is a deceived wolf who made a false vow and an oath to God. Jeff played the roles of Judas Iscariot and Korah, betraying and rebelling against me. This is Sean talking. While I was under one of the most severe tests of my life, this rebellion began to manifest while my mother was experiencing her first signs of dementia. I recognized this was an attack from Satan. He strikes us when we are most vulnerable and will use people closest to us to do it. Amen. You got to put on the full armor of God is our defense and against these fiery darts from the enemy. Brothers and sisters, keep praying in the spirit. And what does that truly mean? What is that biblically speaking? What is that with proper exegesis? What is praying in the spirit? It ain't praying in tongues. It's praying with the mind of Jesus Christ and having his heart and his priority, his will, your will be done. These name it, claim it guys don't care nothing about his will. It's my will be done, says they. I will do this. And I will do that. That's, you know, that's what Satan said. Isaiah 14, the five I wills. We have no will. Our will has died. Our will is the Lord's will. Lord, what will thou have me do? And so when we pray, that's our heart. It's his priorities and his values in mind. Satan is a defeated enemy when we pray like that, okay? And then we got those verses that we read last night, and the code translation is this. Jeff Fiesel will rise up, Cam. Jeff Fiesel will be the enemy. Hmm. He will rise up against the prophet before the Lord at the time of the mother of Moses, her dementia, Korah gathered all the congregation against them. He made a false vow. He lied to Moses, Elijah. Your lamp to the codes is Sean Mitchell. If you're going to get this fresh manna from heaven, it's Sean Mitchell's codes that'll do it. Nobody else's. They are garbage and they are Satan infiltrations. Satan, satanic infiltrators. Their codes are lies, man. Yeshua is in Sean. The exegesis is marvelous and holy to the Lord. We looked at that last night. Praise God. So we got that straight. Let's look at uh, some of the other ones from six and a half years ago. Amen. This one we're going to look at is from December 29th, 2016. You were lost, destroyed in it, and the name is Nibiru. It's vital that we keep coming across these. We're going in order, okay, as God gave these to Sean. And God gave him clarity. I mean, Sean's got a lot that he hadn't produced yet for us. And so as God gives him leave, makes him ready, he says, produce that next one. And so these come in order, and that's how we're doing these, okay? And so you were lost, destroyed in it. The name is Nibiru. And this is from December 29th, 2016. Sean says, I searched the New Testament, that's the Aramaic, for the best meetup of Nibiru and Wormwood for the Aramaic spelling of that. And he found this. I personally believe that Nibiru is just one of the planets in this system. Nobody really knows. This is the name that unlocks many codes in the Bible. So he says, okay, I'm going to search Nibiru. And boom, there's a bunch of them. God has a bunch, a ton of codes. Okay. Then he starts looking at the numbers. D does this number uh, have any familiarity with me? Because God and he, just like you and the Lord, have special numbers, special dates that mean something to you, different values. That's your communication with the Lord. And so he, he will look for these things, and then God will impress on him to look at different codes. And so there's many that this word Nibiru unlocks. Personally, I believe Nibiru is just one of the many planets in this system. Nobody really knows. This is the name that unlocks many codes in the Bible. So it's reliable. And guys, this was six and a half years ago. Now we know way for sure. We got so many about Nibiru in the system. We've learned about the seven-headed dragon and so forth, okay? These were the beginning days. This is exciting. And God has given us much more revelation on top of what we're reading right here. It's beautiful to look back and see how accurate these were. Amen? With, with We didn't have the understanding that we do when we these came out, but they're just as accurate. And when you read them, they're like, oh, that's what the Lord's referring to. It's exciting. Exegesis, the proper study, the proper breaking down of Scripture and understanding it properly in truth. This is the name that unlocks many codes in the Bible, so it's reliable. In any event, the star called Wormwood, now we now know that to be a slush ball comet in the tail of this system. 
the seven headed dragon with the 10 moons, seven planets, 10 moons coming at us, man, with a 2 million mile wide debris tail. Then the length of that, you know, just goes on beyond that, sucking up all the space junk as it comes magnetically, electromagnetically. Okay, and inside its tail is where all these fireballs of hail and sulfur and everything's coming from. It's where they came from for Sodom and Gomorrah. Every time this tail whips by Earth, boy, it leaves some debris for God's judgment perfectly timed and perfectly aimed. And it's coming. Hey, I'm going to encourage you to be saved. Why don't you be saved? Be part of the bride of Christ, man. It's going to be the greatest eternity you have ever known starting today. Our eternal life begins the day you believe. The eighth day. We're new creations. Old things have passed away. It's awesome. We're eternal beings. We are justified and sanctified and glorified, awaiting our glorified bodies. It's going to be awesome. Believe today. Please be saved and save yourself from this demise, this judgment system that's coming. Nibiru and Wormwood run parallel next to each other at the same ELS in this code. Like that. Same number counts. Nibiru, Wormwood. This is God and his... Numbers. What is the skip on this thing, man? Let's see here. Boom. The skip is 59,837. So every 59,837, 59,837, 59,837, 59,837, giving us the exact phrase of you were lost, destroyed in it, and the name is Nibiru. God's awesome. And then all these other terms that are thrown in here just beautifully, man. And so Nibiru also lands in Revelation 12.10, which is showing the dragon being cast down. Beware of false prophets and teachers saying that the body of Christ will be in the tribulation. Not one person who's in the body of Christ, not one person who is the bride of Christ, saved, not one saved person who has placed their faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ and been born again, who has the Holy Spirit of God in them, will be left here for any of the tribulation. Hallelujah. Can you rejoice in that with me, man? I praise God for that. He wants to save us. We're not destined to his wrath and anger. And all of this is his wrath and anger, beginning with America being toasted before the first seal is broken, before the tribulation starts. The destruction of America gives rise to the seven-year tribulation and the need of a false leader. Barack Hussein Obama. We already know it. Guys, it is, so, it is so funny knowing all these truths that the Bible Code has revealed to us. God, that he's revealed to us in his dialect. And we're listening to all their lies on the news and all their setups. And they're doing it for this reason. And, that, and we're like rolling our eyeballs saying, just get to it already, will you? But everybody else who doesn't know what we know, you know, the, I don't know, 100 of us. And then there's only 20 that will like it. On Facebook, everybody else is in the dark and they believe the talking heads. Or if they don't believe the talking heads, they still don't go on to believe in Jesus Christ. So they're still living in the lie. We encourage you not to live in the lie, to walk these truths out and believe the Bible in the plain text and believe the Bible in the coded text. And it's hard to believe something you've never read. And I'm encouraging you to read that Bible 10 to 20 chapters every day. 10 to 20 chapters every day. Become so familiar with the heart of God. Will ya? No? Okay. We encourage you to. Please do. They're saying, oh, the body of Christ will be left in the tribulation. Don't you believe them? They're liars. From the moment Jesus opens that first seal, the wrath of God is being poured out. And we're in heaven, man. And the events of this table appear to be at the sixth seal. That great earthquake. A great, incredible earthquake. Probably that is what that means. 2024. See, America is going to be destroyed at the night of the rapture. Big portions of it. And then that'll give time. Oh, we need a leader. Things will settle. AI will be discerning which way they need to go in their plan. And God's up in heaven laughing. We're laughing with him. Okay? Because they're bumbling fools and they're trusting in demonic computer systems, the quantum computing system. Okay, AI, do not talk to Alexa. Do not talk to your computer and ask it questions. You hate the Ouija board. You believe the Ouija board's evil. Alexa is the Ouija board stupid for retarded adults. Quit 
asking her questions. Okay? From the moment Jesus opens that first seal, the wrath of God is being poured out. The events in this table appear to be at the sixth seal. For those in Christ, there's no reason to be fearful. Hallelujah, man. Revelation 6, I beheld, this is verse 12 to 13, and I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, we beheld him, him opening the sixth seal. That's what we're watching. Our, our view is Jesus in heaven at his throne while he's popping these seals off this scroll, man. And we're like, yeah, I'm, I'm heavenward. Okay, praise God. And so when he did that from my vantage on earth, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. That means Nibiru come between earth and the sun. Okay? That 24-hour eclipse we keep seeing in these Bible codes. Not three days like all the Pentecostals are saying. He just talks about 24 hours. Okay? One day. And the stars of heaven fell to earth, and the fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken by a mighty wind. Revelation 8, 11, and the name of the star was called Wormwood. Right here in this Bible code, guys, it's all right here in front of us. The main code, you were lost, destroyed in it, and the name is Nibiru. The terms, Wormwood, as it is written in the book of the prophets, I prophesied, says Jehovah. Hail of blood, H-A-I-L. Those hundred pound talents of fireballs coming down, smoking the world, man. Like all the movies show, they know what's coming. And they want to show you so all the karma is off of them. They believe in that garbage. And they're still not going to fear God. They fear karma. So they let you know what's happening because they know what's coming. They've seen the pictures and they give you chemtrails so you can't see a thing. Hail stones of blood, the wrath to come thus, the dragon, eclipse, perplexed, hail and horror of blood for it. Fire equals blood. They wept and mourned. There's going to be a ton of that, guys. There's going to be a ton of weeping and mourning from the day we're raptured, even until this time, and that just grows and grows and grows in its depths. Of sorrow, its depths of pain, depths of mourning and crying out. It's for the world. All the world lovers, all the earth dwellers, all the people that hated heaven, hated heaven's king. This is for you, pal. And it's coming. Blood and fire. And this planet, Nibiru, is the cause of all this hail. Nobody ever asked. I've never heard preachers give us the reason and where it came from. Where do all these judgments come from? They, they won't stop there. And when you tell them it comes from uh, Nibiru, the planet system, Nibiru, and God's judgment system, they laugh at you. They laugh you to scorn. They laugh God's thunder. This is no, thunder number five, I believe Vondo said last night. Nibiru, God's thunder, and people laugh at his thunder. Don't you dare laugh at his thunder, man. Okay, it's a star and a planet, and people are seeing that sunrise, the star part, every day, and the sunset. It's hail of fire. It's the dragon. There is fire. It is Yah's wrath. Therefore, we won't be here. Hallelujah. His prophets have documented this thing. Now, the prophets of old documented it in the plain text, and Sean and I are documenting it right here. I'm documenting it right now in a video. He has already given this to us six and a half years ago, documented it for eternity. It was forever in eternity in heaven, settled, and God got it to him. He unsealed the thing and shared it with us. Fresh manna came to us December 9, 29th, 2016. It's been documented, man. It is here. And God is using us on this side, preaching and hearing and amening it. So the people on that side will know that it was real and they should have listened to us. Amen. God's prophets have documented this thing and that's what we're doing right now. And you're part of this documentary and you better rise up. You better hate what God hates. He hates Easter. You bet. If you celebrated that today, you need to repent before him, cry out, tear your clothing apart. Say, woe is me. I'm undone, Lord. I am a filthy pig to do this to you. These detestable things in your nostrils. 
that I celebrated in and drew my children into, my wife and I had a country drive today. And we come after home, after home, after home with 15 cars in the driveway out there in the middle of the country with all those kids chasing down these eggs. Wicked, wicked, wicked. The little children. Remember in 9-11 when they had the little children in the school class? I forgot what they were, kindergarten, first grade, reading, and, and they had them performing the ritual and declaring the curse as the planes were hitting into the building, the kids were sitting there and, and screaming out, hey, the plane must hit steel. And right there, uh, Bush gets whispered into his ear and the little kids were pronouncing the curse and you have your little kids hunting eggs and they are giving a ritual unto the resurrection of the Antichrist when Satan enters his body at mid-trib. That's what today was all about. And you better repent in sackcloth and ashes about that, man. God will forgive you. He's already forgiven you. God will take care of it. There will be no separation in fellowship. You've, you're, you've just se separated more wedges between you and the Lord. And people don't know it. That's why they laugh at us when we talk about this and they just keep on doing it. Because their distance is so far from the Lord, they haven't heard him clearly in years. And we're crying out, hopefully loud enough for you to hear us. Let's look at another code. This is January 10th, 2017. It says, son of mine, the matrix key is for me. The Bible code, this is Sean, matrix has been unlocked for us, the Holy Spirit filled believers. Remember us reading that this morning? If you didn't hear this morning's message, please do that. I, I cannot believe how in line this is. And he even uses a verse in this code from January 10th, 2017 that we preached this morning. It blew my mind when I saw this. God's wonderful, miraculous timing. The Bible code matrix has been unlocked for us, the Holy Spirit filled believers, the mature ones. Those who have said, Lord, show me the truth. I don't care nothing about this world. Show me the truth. He's given us the Bible code. He's unlocked it for us. But the key belongs to to Jehovah. So Jehovah, God, will give our brother, his prophet, Moses, Elijah, Sean Mitchell, a key in his heart. What word do you want to unlock this thing? And when God's ready to unlock it, God will give him the word and he'll place the words in the system and begin to hunt it down and look it over. Okay. God's given it to us, but the key belongs to Jehovah. First Corinthians 2.10. Here's the verse we read this morning. One of all of them in chapter two. But God has revealed it to us by his spirit for the spirit searches into everything, even the depths of God. We covered this verse this morning and we talked about the Bible code before I saw this in the Bible code. Now I had seen it years ago. I've seen it a couple times. You'll see that where I've highlighted it. I think the last time was three years ago. And boy, there it is. And then Sean's, one of his favorite verses, it's, it's on his page. Proverbs 25, 2. People say, oh, God don't have secret things. He don't hide things. You need to go back to the plain text. People who say that have never read the plain text often enough. Read 10 to 20 chapters a day and you'll come across many verses where God conceals things, hides things, and covers them up and allows you to dig for them as treasure. Okay. This verse is Proverbs 25, 2. It's the glory of God. God loves to conceal things. And it's the honor of kings to search out a matter. And that word matter means word. Let's look at that again. It is the glory of God to conceal a word. And it's the honor of kings to search out a word. That's what the word means. Matter and thing is word. The main code, oh, son of mine, the matrix key is for me. Oh, Jehovah, consider how I love your precepts. Do, do you love his word? Do you love every word of his word? Do you know that it's the very words of his heart, every word, every yod and tittle? Are you going to follow him? Do you love him enough just to obey his word when you hear it, and keep his precepts and hold them higher than anything on planet earth? Jesus said, you love me when you keep my precepts, my word, my commandments, my testimonies, higher than anything on your list. 
Your bucket list, if there's such a thing, should begin with uh, Bible reading every morning, 10 to 20 chapters. I want to hang out with Jesus and have it all things heavenly. Oh, to find these things, the source of Yah, the source. Find Coming after the source, guys, when we see these Bible codes, it's not just words on a page. We have the Lord's heart here, the very source. These, these words were forever settled in heaven, and he's getting them to us, fresh manna, back there in December of 2017, January of 2017. And now we're here reading it again, and it's always fresh. The Word of God is live, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, and it will poke and pierce wherever it needs to, to cut the junk out and to bring healing, cuts cancer out. The source is Jehovah. Oh, you'll understand the lamp of the Bible. It's encoded. It's encoded. There is a Bible text. God was telling us this seven years ago. It's unlocked for us. Who's us? The mature ones who love him back. That was today's sermon. Read or listen to today's sermon. God gave that to my heart this morning. And here we are singing it in a Bible code from six and a half years ago. Same verse, same purpose, same emphasis, same reasoning. He's telling us it's encoded and it's unlocked for us, the mature Christian who will believe. Now, it's unlocked for babies. Jesus said, unless you believe like the immature ones, <laughs> the, the little ones, you, you can't come to my heaven. So we believe with all of our heart. And in believing these things exist, God speaks to our heart and matures us. He grows us in faith. His whole purpose is to mature us, to bring us out of being children, to bring us out of being naive and not knowing what the Bible says and knowing what it says, knowing his heart. Therefore, as he intended, we'll know it'll be unlocked and we will know what he knows, what he intended for us to know. The key belongs to Jehovah and he wants us to know these things, man. That's why we say read the 10 to 20 chapters in your plain text and become familiar with the book. And uh, Vondo has placed the link up here. He has, Sean has re-updated the book. It is all updated with all the new fresh stuff. Get it downloaded and familiarize yourself with the heart of Jehovah because the key belongs to him. Amen. Heather says, uh, God's timing is perfect. Only those who seek out the truth will see his. Hallelujah. We believe with all our heart and our loving father wants us to know his heart. Dude, please. That's so perfect. That's what we've been saying. God wants you to know his heart, and this is his heart. This is what we scream out night after night after night. Will you get to know his heart? Will you shut your TV off and quit chasing your own lust? Because every man, when he sins, he's drawn away of his own lust. And when lust hath conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it's finished, all things about you lead to death. And all things about Jesus Christ leads to life, life everlasting, joy in your soul, fruit of the Spirit, man. And people just won't believe us when we say that. But God said that. That's his heart. He wants you to know his truths, man. And therefore, as he intended, honoring the Lord Jehovah. You honor God when you set the world aside, when you set your own personal lust aside, and you dig into his secrets. It's the glory of God to conceal a word, and it's the honor of kings to search out that word. And guys, you and I don't have to search it out. We just have to read what's there. It's already been searched out by one Moses, Elijah, Sean Mitchell, God's chosen one, his Levite. Oh, man, please believe, guys. Let's look at another one. Don't you love these codes? January 20th, 2017, Trump. Okay, Trump was just inaugurated in January of 2017. Remember that? He was voted in on November 8th of 16, but he wasn't inaugurated until January of 17. Okay, so here's these Bible codes. It says, this one's called Trump. Trump on January 20th, 2017. It's at a skip of 6688. Negative, 6688. You know, it totals 28, which is 14 twice. 66 is the devil's number and 88 is the Lord's. What? Yeah, just, we'll just keep on going here. Trump inauguration and Obama is his adversary. This is Sean's talking to us, his commentary. 
Keep an eye on what Obama does. It could be very interesting. You did, didn't you? It was, wasn't it? Keep your eye on what he does. It could be very interesting concerning prophecy, concerning uh, our connecting to Trump is your days in the land which you shall possess with president encoded in it. Obama is in the very same ELS as Trump. Remember this? Trump is at that ELS of 6688 and so is Obama. 6688, standing side by side, parallel, going straight up and down vertically. It says, it's connecting to the stranger that is within your gates. Obama is the stranger that's within our gates. The Trojan horse, he's not even American, and he became the American president for eight years. Straight from the land down under, hell. Brought in, and all these people, the whole plan was that. You guys know, listen to me. The purpose of Ronald Reagan... Wonderful, awesome, American patriot, uh, war-loving Ronald Reagan. You know what his purpose was? To bring us into incredible debt that we could never get ourselves out of. In the name of war and protection and Star Wars and and his role. While everybody was rah rah re in this conservative guy. He was acting because he was an actor. Bedtime for Gonzo. What? Yep. And his purpose, his role, was to get the United States so far indebted. What are, why are we saying this? Because their plan was to infiltrate the United States with their Trojan horse. The one from the land down under in hell. Who's not even American. And that's what made the ritual so great, guys. Because everybody believed that he was. Who would believe that he is. And that empowers a ritual when you... Activate yourself, involve yourself in the lie. That's why we holler against Christmas and Easter, because it's all a lie. has nothing to do with the Bible, nothing to do with the Jesus Christ of Nazareth, nothing biblically about any of it. Nothing biblical. And when you activate yourself in that role, in that lie, in that ritual, you're empowering the ritual for the devil. And the Lord will have much to say about that at the judgment seat of Christ. He's already sent his prophets and preachers to warn you against that before then, so you'll repent and change your ways. Remember, just before Revelation 4.1, the rapture, the rapture is found at Revelation 4.1. John went through that open door. That's the rapture door. Before that was Revelation chapter 2 and 3, the seven churches. And Jesus was hollering, repent, repent, repent. Get on the same page with me and get off the page with the pagans. Get off the pagan page and get there on my page. The Bible? That's why we holler out, get on Jesus' page, repent, believe like Jesus. Pray in the Spirit, believe in the Spirit, have the mind of Christ, which is His priorities and His will and His way. Okay? Your days in the land which you shall possess. With President encoded in it. Obama, that was that was Trump. Obama is at the very same ELS as Trump connecting to it, is the stranger that is within your gates, proving again that Obama is a fraud. Inauguration is also in the same verse as president, which also crosses Obama's name, showing he was also a president with activist. Uh, yeah, with activists is at the same ELS, besides Trump, it is also incredible to see, okay? Let's look at these terms. You got Trump up there, but then he has an adversary and opponent who happened to be a president in your days at the land you shall possess, and he's concerning America. These two were the president of America, and God shows that here, what he's talking about in his story. The stranger is with, within your gates with activists, but Jehovah was recognized, Okay, so there was these two powers. We had the Obama power for eight years, and that was democratic communism, hell without God. And then Trump comes along and starts talking about God, about God, about God, and his advisors are the people from TBN talking about God and using the word Jesus. Okay, though they're not believers in Jesus, though they're all going straight to hell, they brought attention to the name Jesus, the name that is above all names, who happens to be God, the same as Yah. And 
they were equal with one another. Though Jesus brings himself under the authority of the Father, and he became obedient even unto death, even the death of the cross. He submitted himself under the Father, but they are equal as God. And so God had the attention placed on him through this situation. And Christians rose up, and many Christians in name. Remember, we're not to unify with Christians who add works to their salvation. They're not of us. They are of hell. They are of a group that God abhors. Because Jesus Christ went through all that grueling pain and agony and taking on the sin of the world. This thing was huge, guys, bigger than you know. And he said, it's finished. And now we believe in that. To add anything to that infuriates God, brings on his wrath. You're not saved. You haven't made it to salvation yet. You are still under the wrath of God. And this Paula White and all these others who were Trump's advisory council are all going straight to hell, but they used the name Jesus and brought attention to the Bible. And Yah was recognized in the middle of all this. So people could, who had a heart, say, who, who is this Jesus? And begin to study it on their own. And hopefully they would research and go online and look at it and find a YouTube channel like ours. But guys, you got to like our videos to get it up there where they can find us. Okay? Will you please do that? It'll pay itself in dividends for you at the judgment seat of Christ if you will like Christian uh, preaching like we have. True salvation, true walking with the Lord, walking in righteousness, being saved by His grace. Only be, being saved by His grace. And if you will start liking those videos in regularity and getting those up and coming over to Facebook doing the same thing, that'll get us up higher in people's minds and eyes, and they can hear the truth about who is this Jesus. Yah was recognized, and I hope he was recognized clearly. In most cases, he was recognized and presented as a, a false individual who his character, who the word does not present him to be. So it all happened at the inauguration. It's right there, Trump and Obama at the same ELS, and telling us that Trump is a stranger in the land. He's a Trojan horse within our gates, and he's going to destroy us. We find out later that he is in charge of this whole bring down of America with Russia. He's in cahoots with Russia and China to bring us down with the Russian Poseidon nukes. Okay, We've learned this just in the last six months, and it's him. We already knew that he was a stranger in the gates and don't trust the thing that he says. I have family that loves him and thinks he's God. Bunch of retards. All right. This one is from January 24, 2017. It says, the code is to be investigated, studied. It's concealed. God don't hide things. Let's hear what God just said from his heart. The code is to be investigated and studied. You won't find it on the surface because it's concealed. He's hidden it for people who will dig. It's the honor of kings to search it out. The honor of the mature who will go search it out. The honor of those who will set their remote down and their sports down and their hobbies down and their movies down, their entertainment down and get to searching. There will be blessings of treasure that you'll find that had been concealed that are now unconcealed, unsealed for us. And Sean's made it easy for all of us. All you got to do is go through his pages on this book and find out the treasure of the living God in the translations, okay? And Sean's wonderful commentary. Make sure you read his commentary so you know where his mind is. He has looked at so many codes and he knows where God's heart is in the middle of each code table. Read his commentary, know what's going on, and then read that wonderful translation from the Lord. The main code here says, the code is to be studied. It is hidden, concealed, a treasure. Bam. Wow. The Bible code is a treasure from the Lord. And he, like a parent, and see, this is where Satan gets it. Well, let's hide some eggs and let the kids find it. And the parents and everybody satisfied with that. Oh, my kid found an egg that I dropped straight there on the grass, hid it nowhere so he could run right up on it and find it. And God's concealed the code just like that, and people don't care nothing about the heart of God. Heather says, hey, man, Jesus doesn't need our help. Amen. And yet he's called us unto his heart. And he's called us to help. We are now his hands. Remember last night that Obama and Trump 
are tools in the hand of the living God. And he's working out the entire process of the salvation of Israel through these two fools. How much more you and I, the yielded Christian, a tool in his hand, being his ambassadors, doing what he says. He doesn't need us, but he's chosen to use us. Will you choose to be used? Will you say, Lord, use me, man. Uh, send me anywhere. What, go with me. Whatever you want me to do, I will do. And I believe you'll provide and you'll take care of me as we do this thing. You'll be so blessed and honored at your faith, man. It says in these tables, th this is the one from January 24th, 2017. The code is to be investigated. It's concealed. Where is the code? It's hidden. You search for it. You search for it. You search for the code. And for these, even for the priest, shall be holy, offering the hidden code. And we know that Sean's a Levite. He's a priest of the Lord. He's a descendant of Moses. Amen? Bringing us the word hidden and found. God didn't hide them to keep them hidden from us. He didn't hide them from us. He hid them for us. Who is us? The diggers. The kings with the heart to search them out. You know, he's made us a kingdom of prophets, priests, and kings. Right now, we are in our prophet and priest roles, every one of us, bringing God to the people and bringing the people to God, prophet and priest. And soon we'll be in our king roles. But right now, getting to the king, we are the subjects and we are servants of all. Amen? And in serving the Lord, serving the living God, serving others, we just dig in his treasury bin and find a bunch of treasure. If you'll dig... They're hidden, not from us, but for us. Revealed, and he brought them to us. Sean brought them to us via the Lord bringing them to him. Oh, they're in the Bible. It's the ephod for the message, and God has made him, Sean Mitchell, the ephod wearer. He is the only one who has been approved. Remember, there was only one high priest in the entire world down there at Jerusalem in God's tabernacle and temple. Only one dude. And that dude doesn't exist in Israel right now. He will soon, after the rapture, God will place Sean in Jerusalem. And he's the ephod wearer. He is the priest of God right now. He is the representation of bringing us God's fresh manna, fresh word. And he's no different than Moses and Joshua and David and the sons of Korah and Asaph. And the list goes on of all the Bible writers. He's one in that group, bringing us the word of God. Vandal's put up the verse in Revelation 1, 6, And he hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. Continuing on with the terms in this code, the hidden, the light, it came from the Torah and a computer found them. The Bible is alive. It's encoded. It's encoded from the skip. Count the skips and their exact skips. The ELS, equidistant, that means exact skips. Uh, EL, letter sequences. Equidistant letter sequences or skips. For us, encoded from the skip, and it's a gift, guys. This is the most beautiful gift from the Lord. Not only is it his fire and his thunder and his heart, it, it's his gift to us. Because the whole, guys, 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 please listen to me. God's whole character is that of a giver. Give, give, he gives everything away. He gives it away for free. Now, it cost him a ton. It cost him the life of his only begotten son. But he gives it to us free. He gives us salvation free, and he gives us this Bible code free. Will you receive the gift of the Bible code, please? We encourage you to receive the gift of salvation so you can go to heaven. Why don't you receive the gift of the Bible code for revelation. Knowing God's heart. What a gift. What a wonderful gift to know God's heart. Nope. Hide them eggs, honey. We got some Easter rocking to do. You can go pagan on this thing or you can go Bible believing on this thing. Celebrating Easter is pagan and not Bible believing. Bible believing, you believe that the Bible codes are the Bible and you know they're treasures from the Lord. You know he's given us his heart. And you know if you're a Bible code believer, a believer in God's word and his dialect, you know 
that Passion Week doesn't happen until the middle of May. Jesus dies May 18th, and he's resurrected from the dead on the 21st, and we begin counting 50 days to July 9. That is three months from today, April 9. Are you ready? Are you counting? You ready to count? Up. And this is miraculous. It says Jehovah is miraculous. Do you believe that? Do you believe he can give us Bible codes? You guys see how simple this really is? When you have that table there in front of you and you got these Hebrew letters in the Old Testament, you have Aramaic characters here in the New Testament, and it's just right there in front of you, and there, here's the words, and there's a word, and there's a word from a fellow who did the digging and the searching and the discovering and being freaked out by Jesus every time he finds it and loving it, being excited and understanding, oh, Jehovah, you're a miracle worker. These are miracles. Do you love the Bible code like that? These are miracles. Jehovah is a miracle worker, man. He's miraculous. And all of this is a gift from Jehovah. Why don't we go ahead and look at one more? This is from January 25th, 2017. I am is my name. I am to behold. Looking unto Jesus. That's beholding him. John says, we saw him glow in the dark and we beheld him. We beheld him, glowing, glowing in glory. We beheld him. He says, behold me. I am, is my name. I am to behold. That means in his Bible codes. Take hold of this thing, man. The rapture is very soon. Pentecost, the first phase of it, the week phase, is three months from today. Let's look at this. Sean says, he gives us the verse, John 8, 58, Yeshua, that's Jesus, he said unto them, timeless truth, I speak to you, before Abraham would exist, I am the living God. And this is from the Aramaic text. This is how the Aramaic text says it. Let's read it again. He, Jesus said to them, timeless truth, I speak to you, before Abraham would exist, I am the living God, and it blew them away, I am, that I am. I'm the living God. I'm the self-existing one. That's what I am means. I, I exist. I exist because I exist. I exist. I am that I exist. I exist because I exist. The ever-living God, man. The power of God and amen. Jesus is God. That's what this says here in this code. These terms. The main code is I am my name I am is my name. I am to behold the power of God and amen. Jesus is God. Yeshua is God. Yeshua is God, guys. Unless you believe that Jesus is God, you're lost and you're going to hell. Just a simple thing to believe. Will you just go ahead and believe it? Jesus himself said, I'm God. You'll believe him to be your savior, but you won't believe him to be your God. You better believe that God came from heaven and became a man and died for you in your stead because only God could do this. Only God could take all the sin of the entire world of humanity upon himself and be destroyed for it in your place. And only God could infuse his righteousness into you to make you righteous enough to make it to his heaven and to live eternally as his bride. Only God could do this. You better come to know that, that Jesus is God. He is also the word of God. That's what it says right here in this table. He's the word of God and Jehovah is the God of Israel. He's the one to hope for. It is finished. It is fulfilled in him. Jesus is as God, my witness, in the sight of Jehovah and he walked. In the sight of Jehovah, he walked. He walked the talk. He walked the word. We see here a couple of times here, he's the word, he's the word of God. He walked that word. He walked the truth. He walked heaven. And you and I are called to do that as ambassadors. We're not just called to talk the talk like many Christians do who are still going to hell. There's a whole lot of people that talk about the Bible and preach sermons and they're going straight to hell. How about you and I who are saved, who are born again, who are the bride of Christ, the body of Christ? How about if we not only just talk it, and please talk it if you're not. Talk it and walk it. Jesus did. We're walking in his footsteps. Paul walked in his footsteps. He said, be followers of me. We're following Paul as I am of Christ. As what Jesus taught me on Mount Sinai, that's how we're walking. And we're like, we got you, man. Romans to Philemon. We'll study that one hard. 
And then we get to know God's character, Genesis through Revelation. Get to know God, read the entire Bible, read it fast in big chunks. Jesus fulfilled everything. He is God. The Son was recognized by God. Remember, this is my beloved Son at the baptism. This is my beloved Son at the uh, Mount of Transfiguration. He was recognized by the Father to be the Son of God, and He's the very God of heaven. Jesus Himself said, I am God. And He did all this for the people of Israel. And Sean is going to come back with these codes. He's going to come back with this audio. And people will know that we preached all of this on this side, and it had been in their Bible, their Torah, their Tanakh, and the New Testament the whole time. And Sean will share it with them, and their hearts will be broken, and they will believe that Jesus was the I Am, that Jesus was God, that their parents crucified him and cursed them because of their stupid decision to not believe what he said when he said, I'm God. That was John chapter 8, I'm God, man. And they just would not believe throughout the Bible, through, throughout his mission, he said that. And his crowd got thinner and thinner and thinner the deeper his truths went. And so it is with this Bible code. You can't go deeper truths than this Bible code, man. And the crowd thins with the deeper truth and the deeper love and the deeper treasure that you, you can receive. And we're encouraging you to be a people who follow, man. It says, the Chronicles, the words of Yah. Read the book of Chronicles. Will you read the Chronicles? From the Chronicles come some of the greatest Bible codes. Okay? Oh, the Chronicles are just too long and all these people. You might be related to some of them people. And God knows exactly who they are. And you better love every one of these people he names in the Chronicles because they mean something to him. And since we have flushed the world and we care nothing about the devil, what matters to us is God's heart. So if these people mean something to you, Lord, they definitely mean something to me. And we're going to meet those people. We're going to meet every person who was a believer in the Redeemer of Israel. We're going to meet them in heaven. And God's going to bless us big time. Are you ready? Guys, download that Bible code. Download the uh, book and get to know it. Become so familiar with it and read that Bible 10 to 20 chapters a day. 10 to 20 chapters a day. If you participated in any kind of egg or bunny worship, saying he is risen, you are celebrating the devil and the time in the mid-trib when the Antichrist raises from the dead. That is the ritual you are empowering today. Real resurrection is in one month and a couple weeks from now. Hello? Hello. I love you guys, man. Walk with Jesus, pray daily, and lift each other up, man. Uh, Cheryl says, put these sermons on thumb drive in case Obama clears social media. It's all wisdom. It's all wisdom, however the Lord leads you. I think that's a great idea. And all the Bible code. Put that Bible code on thumb drive and these sermons as well. Amen? We are the prophets of God preaching His Word, His manna from heaven, His hidden, His hidden gems that He's hidden for us to find. They've already been found. Sean's doing all the digging and all you got to do is the reading and the believing. We encourage you to believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ and His Word, both the plain text and the coded text. Catherine says, thank you, Pastor. Amen. You are so welcome. We love doing this. And by God's grace, we'll do it again tomorrow night. Love you with all my heart. We pray for you every day. My wife and I pray for you twice a day together. And then as the Lord puts you on our hearts throughout the day, we pray for you guys. Love you, man. God bless.